And uh, we bring on the head coach of the Tar Heel baseball program, the ACC champs, by the way. That'd be Scott Forbes. Coach, first of all, good morning and uh, congratulations and all the success up to date. Thank you so much. Glad to be on with you guys. Good morning to you all. It's always a pleasure. Uh, all right, so I want uh, to do a number of things for you. Could you please explain to me the infield fly rule? That's my first question for you. <laughs> well, yeah, I can explain it to you really well. But it's pretty basic. If the base runners cannot leave the base, it should be called an infield fly rule. So there you go. That's where uh, you start. That's right. First, yeah. in, first and yeah. at least first and second, and less than two outs. Right. At that's, least first and second. We're showing correct. the play. We're showing the play uh, right here. Kind of a tweeter play, uh, Coach, but obviously there's something that preceded it. As you're watching this and you're watching that play happen and you know that there's a previous call, we don't need to get into all of that, but what's kind of going through your mind and combined with the stress of, hey, we got to win this game? Well, I just felt strongly that it should have been called an infield fly. Um, if you go back and really watch it, um, you know, and I talked to a lot of higher upper umpires in the ACC and the SEC and just said, hey, you know, tell me what you saw. And they all, you know, they all told me they, they thought it should have been called an infield fly because the first thing they asked, asked themselves as umpires is, okay, it protects the base runners, um, right. and the base runners couldn't go anywhere. And then I also felt like that the second baseman did a really good job. We had a shortstop way back, Josh Horton, um, that did the same thing. If you watch him come in, his gloves held up. And he sees that the base runners are still there, and he just folds his glove down and yeah. hits the ball to the ground because like, he's got some instincts and makes a great play. Coach, I know that we can kind of laugh about it now uh, because obviously you've won and you've moved on, but uh, boy, it was a testament to your team, though, wasn't it? I mean, given all the stuff that was going on, listen, bad calls happen in all sports all the time. you got to deal with it. Uh, sometimes it's for your benefit. Sometimes it goes against you. But at the end of the day, uh, back against the wall, you come through this thing through the loser's bracket. Said a lot about your baseball team. Yeah, no doubt. And our coaches, you know, they for 18 innings, you know, I was I was watching the game on TV, which was, you know, way different. But our coaches and our players, you know, they they got it done. And that's hard to do, you know, to, to win two games in an elimination uh, bracket and to do that on the same day is just a credit to our players, number one, but also to – to our assistant coaches. What was that Sunday like uh, for you? Where were you watching the games from? And, well, I mean, look, I this is nothing comparable to it. I'm a Little League coach, Scott, and I follow games sometimes when I can't make it. Like this weekend I'm doing squeeze play uh, on ESPN, and I'm watching on Game Tracker and seeing where my kids are because someone's keeping track of it. You're watching it on TV, and you have no control over it. What was that like, and how did you watch the game? Yeah, um, you know, the rules are very clear about where you cannot be. So I was not allowed to be in the stadium. Um, so I had to be outside of the stadium. So I was not breaking the rule. I can't tell you where I was because that's a secret. <laughs> um, but I watched every pitch, and I was able to find, you know, a live feed. Uh, so it wasn't a delay, you know, on TV, which was cool for me to be at a – to watch it. Um, but it was hard. Like I was way more nervous pacing a lot, but I was watching it with a group of people that were all Tar Heels. So we made the most of it. And we were a lot of high fives, a lot of emotions, excuse me. <clears throat> we had a great time. By the way, you left your briefcase down here in the basement this weekend. I was going to mention it to you. Uh, by the time I got back, you might, you guys must've had a party down here in my house watching this ball game. I, I wasn't going to say anything to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we did have a good time um you know there was some there was a really deep breath on that ball that Vance Honeycutt yeah. robbed yeah. because that ball's hit and I'm like man he's gonna catch that and I'm like oh no that ball's going out and to watch him rob it and I just felt deep down that if we could get by Georgia that we could do it and uh we found a way to do that by one run so but man I, I tell you what I did enjoy was watching our team and how hard they played and how much they were supporting one another and I can see now even more by watching it on TV why so many people are enjoying watching these guys play. And so then you get to Monday and you get the regional final and you get to get back out of the field. And then we were watching it there on, on Squeeze Play and we showed you after the game and just the emotion that you had. Could you just describe what that 
was like. It's not just about winning the regional, but coming back from not being able to watch your team, and then you get to watch your team up close and win a regional championship. What was going through you there? Um, I mean, honestly, before the game, we had uh, you know a very serious discussion because we were a little bit superstitious in baseball whether or not I should be here for the game. Uh, <laughs> backup plan for the home plate meeting to be ejected again, but I decided I would <laughs> coach just let me stay. Yeah, you don't um, want to miss the first two of the super. Yeah, you don't want to miss first two of the super. Exactly. Um, you know, the emotions really came <clears throat> from looking back mm. on where we were at one point in the season at eight and thirteen in the ACC, you know, twenty three and seventeen, and just seeing our guys and how ha- happy they were so I think that's it wasn't the emotions from being gone um because it was about our players and our team um honestly it wasn't it was just about like seeing them go from where they were to where they are now which was really neat so how'd they get there what where did it flip for you guys you know what we came back from Virginia um you know we we lost a heartbreaker on Saturday we've been swept uh, we had one game against Liberty, and then we had exams. And sometimes exams can come at good times here or bad times. And we're not allowed to play a weekend series during exams. So we beat Liberty, which was a big win because they're a great club. And then we had a week off to kind of gather ourselves. Um, and then we had a, a game against Charlotte that we won in 10 innings. And I think the flipping point was we went, we went over to NC State. Uh, we found a way to win that series. We didn't play – great but we won two one-run games and won that series on the road and we knew the rest of our games were at home for the most part at least Wake Forest and Florida State and I started to see that belief and uh, we had success against Wake and then Alberto Osuna you know hit the walk-off home run on Thursday night against Florida State and as soon as he hit that it's like our whole team you could just see like okay those guys are back to where they were early where it's clear they think they can beat anybody. Coach, you're just putting salt in the wound of those folks in Raleigh uh, as NC State being the, the flipping point, and all of a sudden you beat them in uh, Charlotte for the ACC championship. How big a deal was that from a momentum standpoint for your program, to win the ACC title and then roll right into the regional, come out of the loser's bracket, and here comes Arkansas? Yeah, definitely. I think um, you know it's hard to win that ACC tournament. That's one of the hardest things, and a regional. That, that, those are – Super regional, you know, it's two, it's two teams. It's like we've been playing all year. It's just a weekend series. But I think it really helped our team to play in that big of an environment um, with 10,500-plus fans against NC State. And I don't think if we're playing somebody else or if NC State's playing somebody else, there are that many fans there. Um, so I thought that was really big for our entire team because, you know, as you, as you advance, the crowd should get bigger. They should be a little more rowdy, and you're hoping – to play in front of those crowds, but the more you do it, the better you get at it. You mentioned uh, when Vance Honeycutt caught that uh, fly ball late in that game, he has been just unbelievable this season. And for a freshman to come in, he's got 24 bombs. He's going to have 30 stolen bases. Who knows what the future holds for him and, and how those numbers are going to go up. But what has impressed you the most about him as a freshman and how he's done? You know, his skill set, I don't know if I've ever seen that combination um, in all my years of power and speed. Uh, But what everybody else doesn't see is how hard he works and the type of kid and leader he already is. You know, just a total package. It's almost like having uh, 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 the best quarterback in the country on your baseball team. He's got that type of of aptitude and, and He's a sponge. He listens. He wants to continue to get better. But just from the plain skill set, I, I have never seen him be able to do everything that he can do from the speed and power combination. Coach, I mentioned uh, with Arkansas coming to town, you two teams combined now for 20 Super Regional appearances. These are two big-time programs. Uh, what is it about this Arkansas team that grabs your attention immediately when you start doing a little paperwork? Just their tradition. Um, They really slug it offensively. Um, They're going to have power on the mound, but mostly the tradition. Uh, I've met Coach Van Horn on the road uh, recruiting, but I've never coached against them. I've always enjoyed watching them. Um, You know, it reminded me a lot of of our type of teams, and 
he reminded me a lot of how Coach Fox, you know, they're going to be disciplined. They're going to play hard. There's not going to be a lot of extra stuff. Um, so it's two great teams that have been to the College World Series a lot, that have been in Super Regionals. So I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be a great series uh, for our fans for sure. Pitching is obviously something that can win or lose a, a regional or Super Regional. You certainly had enough in the regional What's the plan here with Schaefer and Carlson and company here going into the weekend uh, for Friday, Saturday, and, and and perhaps Sunday? Yeah, you know, that is that is one thing I couldn't be more proud of is, is how well we have pitched the second half of the season and how all of our pitchers have learned what they do well. You know, and Coach Gaines, our pitching coach, has helped them do that. Um, and that way we can match up. But we have, you know, our two starters are our two starters. Carlson will, will start game one. On Saturday, and Schaefer will start game two, and we've been TBA in the third game. You know, pretty much the second half of the season. Um, so that's what we'll do, and and you know, we feel great about our bullpen right now. We feel like we can mix and match, and we feel like you know if we can get to Davis Palermo at the end, at least for those last six outs or three outs, we're in good shape. So I'm excited to watch these guys because they pitch really good for us down the stretch, and again. You know, Carlson pitched against NC State in the championship game. Schaefer, a Friday night game, the ACC tournament, and also an elimination game. So they're ready for this for sure. Coach, if you could uh, correct one thing about college baseball, what would you do? Hmm. Oh, wow. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, they need to get that infield fly rule right. <laughs> sure that falls hey, in the air hey, those three guys that's in uh, chapel hill said they did get it right they don't know what your uh, problem is that's great. That's great. <laughs> maybe, maybe they did maybe they did um, that's, that's no they classic. didn't that's classic that's uh, classic no, hey, no, uh, I, I, I would just say you know that uh i i think it is in a great place right now um you know, I think this transfer portal thing is going to be interesting. I, I, I don't, I can't say that it's it's great for college baseball. So, you know, we just have to see how that goes. But that would be the that would be the main thing, and, and maybe to be a little less nitpicky about, you know, the the some of these new rules they come up with every year, and just let the game be the game. Speaking of that, the super regional format I love because it's best two out of three. It's a weekend series. You're doing it all year long. The regional format is something that's been tinkered with over the last 30, 40 years, right? And we've it's been in this format for a while. It used to be six-team regionals. Now it's four-team regionals. But you lose a game, you got to win five. You, you know, you have to win four. How many teams have that depth of pitching? There's been that floated idea. I know Mike Rooney, my buddy, says, let's do 32 hosts and have it just be all, th- all best of three series. Would you change the regional format um, at all? What do you What do you make of it? You know what? Um, I, th- I think it's good. Uh, okay. The one thing I would change now that I've had a second to think about it is I think the teams that are awarded the host sites um, are awarded them for a reason. Team. And they should be the home team the entire time mm. because they're hosting. Um, that's the way it should work. It shouldn't be like, well, we got to do this, we have to do that. Well, if that's the case, and all the sites should be neutral. Um, and, and that's the thing I would change. But I think the regional format, that the way they've done it now to get it down to the 64 and then get it down to the Super Regional has been good. All right, before I let you go, uh, we've been asking coaches this question for the last couple of months on the show. Um, when it comes to you specifically, what would be your walk-up music? Whether it be getting out of bed, going to work today, <laughs> or game day, whatever the case, what, what's your go-to? Oh, man. Um it would probably be some type of country song um, that talked about trucks, for sure. I mean, <laughs> I mean I'm, I'm from North Carolina. Coach. You want me to give you a specific song? No, uh, no, 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 no. Wait, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But, I, again, I'm not the biggest country fan, necessarily, but I, I think every country song involves trucks, doesn't it? I mean, you're not telling me something <laughs> I don't already know. <laughs> yeah, probably trucks, drinking beer, heartbreak. Um, That's <laughs> Yeah, I would probably go with, uh, I don't know, let's just go with God's Country with Blake Shelton. That'll work. Yes, All, right. All right. And the reason I ask you that question is because I have total confidence that uh, you're going to survive this weekend and get to Omaha. And when we have you back, that's what we're going to play as your walk in and lead in to the next interview. That's the deal. Sounds like a plan to me.
All right. Well, listen, uh, you be nice to those umpires this weekend and behave yourself. Well, you know, we'll touch base next I'll, week. I'll try my best. You got it, coach. Take care of yourself. All right. Y'all have a great day. Off he goes.